Folks, Baywatch Nights is about to become scarier than it's ever been. We've faced a Jogans, bad math twins, and exploding frog hybrid girlfriends, but never has it been more frightening than when we get into the warehouse section of the season. Quite unfortunately, the Mobius is the first of many, many episodes they decided to set almost exclusively in the same damn warehouse, because the last 10 cents of their budget got lost in the couch cushions. According to IMDb, the episode that aired after Space Spores was Possessed, but the German DVDs list a different order and air dates. I didn't explain this very well before, but I should note the German DVDs include the German and US air dates, which is what I was going by. Judging by Germany's dedication to the historic preservation of all things Hoff, it's more than likely their air dates are the accurate ones. But since I've been using IMDb as the basis for all the other videos, and the other seasons of Baywatch and Nights are in the same order, I've decided just to swap these ones out and continue using IMDb's air dates for everything else. I don't really have a way of verifying either one, unless I went insane and bought like 300 different TV guides. And honestly, I care more than you about this, but not enough to go that far. Anyway, this was a very boring paragraph in this review. Ready for a dull warehouse? <laughs> The German name of this episode is Dimension X. Pretty funny, huh, Krang? Damn you, Mitch von Malibu. If only we were watching something as layered and profound as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But unfortunately, we are watching Baywatch Nights. And hey look, Bistro Nights exists again. Will we ever find out if Donna really sold it? Or has Baywatch told us another beautiful lie? You need a tie. I don't like ties. I was in the water and, and, the, and the waves came in and I went over the garden. And, 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 and. This is the latest fashion statement. I think I look just fine. Head Cannon, Garner told him that was cool just before he left as one last parting shot. I do appreciate Ryan talking down to Mitch for a change though. This is a tuxedo. This is not a tuxedo. Once again, this is a tuxedo. So Mitch and Ryan are off to the opening of Lou's new club down at the beach. Apparently pursuing his music career full time didn't work out. Very strange to see this remnant of Blue's Detective Baywatch Nights referenced at this juncture, but I can assure you we will not be seeing anything as interesting as Lou Rawls in his new nightclub. Anyway, this thorough Mitch dunking is interrupted when Ryan's best friend Ashley we always knew about shows up. Even Mitch says he doesn't remember her, despite Ryan always talking about her, apparently, and how she helped her pass her science classes in college, etc. Ashley has showed up with a problem, but Mitch points out they're going to the club while giving her the smarmiest grin he can muster. Ryan is rightfully annoyed at him because he's an asshole, but the camera tilts into a Dutch angle, which means some creepy stuff is gonna happen whether Mitch likes it or not. Ashley and her husband, John, were conducting some quantum physics experiments. And if there's one thing Baywatch Nights and I understand, it's quantum physics. They were messing around with some particle accelerators and created a time-space convergence. You know the drill. Mitch immediately tunes out and starts thinking about seagulls or something. I don't fall. Good. God, I thought it was just me. Yeah, 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 particle accelerators and time-space buttholes or whatever. Tick tock, Lou won't reserve our seats forever. Ashley is worried her husband has become obsessed with this convergence and might enter it himself. So she's come to Ryan and Mitch because they can do something, I guess. We can go over there, can't we? Oh, absolutely. Let's help your friend. I'm gonna call Teague. The experimental interest him and you know, maybe he can help. Oh, good idea. Question, are we even supposed to like Mitch at this point? I've never seen particle accelerators do this. What, shine a spotlight from the ceiling? Yeah, I guess that's not what they're typically used for. I actually went down a rabbit hole trying to understand particle accelerators for this video, and I don't even know why I bothered, because like, look at this. You don't even see the accelerator. It's the quantum physics version of our town. Anyway, the guy who plays John is Neil Roberts, bringing yet another future Nick Fury alumni into the Baywatch Knights fold. As you can see by Hasselhoff's unbridled enthusiasm, he was enamored with his performance. All right, so everyone's speaking in fancy schmancy science talk, but Mitch doesn't understand big words like anomaly and time. What he does understand is football. You <laughs> right in the nuts. All right, just go in already. Ah! 
Behold, the wonders of multi-dimensional travel! Mitch must now find Ryan and Ashley within this vast warehouse landscape. Meanwhile, John and Teague display starkly different sides of the acting spectrum. No. No. The gun! So, just to review. Ashley was worried her obsessed husband would jump into a time-space convergence, so she went to her old college friend and the asshole lifeguard she's made a devil's pact with to come over to their particle accelerator to do something unspecified, only to just wander over and get all three of them pulled inside by a mummy of some sort, while her husband seems to have a very strong desire to not go anywhere near the dangerous time-space convergence. Mitch wears a suit. Teague is mildly interested. They're not coming back. Calm down. Please, you're acting like you don't see someone jump into a time-space convergence every day. According to the IMDB description, we were developing an inanimate laser, whatever that means. Yeah, well, one of our episode descriptions had a slur in it at one point. Anyone can write those things and nobody checks them. Teague calls whoever the hell works for him, or he works for, or with, or whatever, and asks for a satellite scan to trace the target coordinates of any magnetic impulse generations emanating from this location, thus proving he can also say a bunch of smart-sounding words. In case you're wondering, this doesn't go anywhere. Meanwhile, what's Mitch up to? Oh, an alternative universe school! Huh, oh, kinda thought he was gonna do more than just jump on me and run away. Oh, Ryan! Hey Mitch, I was just waiting here to grab your leg like a normal person. Take this, you son of a bitch! Upon finding a rubber duck and a teething ring, Ryan concludes that humans have been here, and thus they're in a parallel dimension. Okay... Sure, they just jumped into a spotlight and landed in a ghoul warehouse, but an alternative universe is too far. The audience speculates if this episode has anything to do with that cutscene in Search and Rescue where Mitch mentions an alternative universe where a young girl got trapped in something way over her head. Which is not precisely how I'd describe this plot, but also sounds condescending enough to be Mitch's description. You might be wondering why this was called a time-space convergence when it's more of a space convergence. Well, here's what Ryan says. Jonathan called it a time anomaly. It's another place for the same time. If it's the same time, why would it be called a time anomaly? This, what? But Mitch suggests that they're in the future, which Ryan thinks is a stupid thing to say. I think we're in the future. Oh yeah, the future's really gonna look like this. I've pulled some ridiculous things out of my butt for the sake of clunky exposition, but an apocalyptic future with mutants in a parallel world? I wish you could hear yourself speak. What appears to be a moronic episode of Baywatch Nights is, however, a smart social commentary. This is a window into our potential future if we're not careful. For in the sweet, sweet days of 1997, the world might be all beach fun in the sun, but if we don't change our ways, in the far future of 1999, we'll be one global warming away from becoming a warehouse full of mutants. Wednesday, September 15th, 1999. Fires consume West due to ozone layer breakdown. When at last climate change is reversed and we live in a beautiful utopia, we will look back on this episode of Baywatch Nights with fresh eyes and finally say the words they deserved all along. Thank you. Pretty environmentally friendly, huh, folks? Knowing that the world ended in late 1999 in the Baywatch universe, it makes a lot more sense that Baywatch Hawaii turned out how it did. Anyway, uh, a giant egg? Holy free holy, how do I make an omelet out of that? Came out of that thing. Oh, oh, there it is! Ah! I love oh my it. god! Will we come back to this egg? Uh, no. While they continue to wander around the warehouse some more, now's a good time to note that this was directed by David Livingston, who has helmed more episodes of Star Trek than any other person. So in between directing episode, uh, 586 and 587 of a beloved sci-fi staple, he decided to take a quick detour to film an episode of one of sci-fi's biggest embarrassments. Kinda interesting to see how projects turn out when you take directors with some legitimacy and give them negative dollars to film on. And it's hard to tell what Baywatch Nights is ripping off at the moment because they have so many better franchises to choose from, but I'm pretty certain this episode only happened because Sliders was popular. Meanwhile, Teague gives a pep talk to the scientist guy. But perhaps it is Teague who needs the pep talk, for he is frightened and unsure of the fate of his only friends, or whatever they are to him. She is alive. So are Mitch and Ryan. Yeah, but you don't know that, do you? Do you? Wow, brilliant. 
Well, I'm just gonna turn the Teague energy knob up a little bit and uh... Now they may only have one chance, but that one chance is you. You got that? Now you get out your old fashioned slide. You power up your new fangled heights and you start caring about the people who need your help. The people who are depending upon you and me to get them back. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> We may never really know what Teague's whole deal is, but I can tell ya, watching him is compelling. Whoop, cameraman got drunk again. And who's this? That homeless guy that showed up in a couple episodes of Baywatch in season one. Guess after Jill died, he wandered into another dimension for a while. He's pretty much resigned to death, explaining how the sun burnt everything up, etc, etc. And then Ryan asks when? Can you remember when? You just looked at a newspaper with the exact date. Actually, why were they still making newspapers if the world was destroyed? I'm beginning to think the ozone layer isn't the only thing with holes in it. Also, this guy was Ryan's physics teacher in their dimension. Supposedly, this is a plot point because they ask him later how to get out of this world, but his answer is just to go back to the place they came in, which is... kind of obvious. Our great arrogance killed us all. Arrogance? Mm, I don't get it. So exhausted, need burgers to refuel. Hi, Kimba! Girls can do it too. Ah, fresh fruits and vegetables. Grab the back of my belt. Why? It will help somehow. Yeah, I see what you mean. I couldn't have gotten through here if I hadn't held onto your belt. I guess they got to home base. So now Mitch can complain about how if Ryan didn't want to help her idiot friend, they would be listening to Lou Rawls right now, which kind of seems like a metaphor for the genre switch between seasons one and two. Mitch beats up some more ghouls and they find Ashley. Teague finds one of the many Nerf footballs John just happens to have lying around his particle accelerator room and puts a message inside for Mitch and Ryan. What do you know about things that go bump in the night? Oh, Teague! Um, I love you. I know you do. Han Solo, move over! Dr. Arnold's notes. It'll show us how to avoid all the stupid... We lost the notes. But we know what's going to happen. It's up to us. Hooray! They stopped global warming or something. Why did they bother with Mitch going back for some notes written by Ryan's old physics professor only to have them burn up and leave us with basically only you can prevent forest fires? What was that giant egg about? And why were all of Teague scenes giving a pep talk to a guy who ultimately did nothing? Who cares? Well, we're all gonna burn up horrifically in two years. Wanna go to Bone Town? Nice try. I'm disgusted by you again. Next time on Baywatch, Stephanie gets married. Meanwhile, Mitch hunts a giant jellyfish. Here comes the bride. <laughs>